This is the iPhone 14 Pro. I've been using this device for almost 10 months. I want to give you guys a vlogger's review. Okay, now we're using my iPhone 14 Pro. Had to give my wife her iPhone back. Kind of rude to have both phones with me in the car. <laughs> Excuse the raindrop sounds. I don't really have anywhere to record. Hopefully one day I will have a studio. But to continue to this review, the iPhone 14 Pro costs $999 plus tax here in the US. I've been upgrading every year since I switched to Apple with the iPhone 11 Pro. I was a hardcore Android user anywhere from a Samsung device, which is what you typically see out in the world, to something out of the ordinary, like a Sony Xperia device. Shout out to all the Xperia compact owners. <laughs> the reason I switched to iPhone was because of the recording capabilities. Although it's subjective, a lot of people will say that some Android phones take better photos than the iPhone. It's a very subjective thing, but I, tend to agree with it sometimes. A lot of photos I've taken on my Samsung devices, for example, have a look to them that just, it blows my mind. Like till today, I show people this picture that I took of some crushed pepper in a cup. This is from the S21, I believe. Still one of the nicest looking pictures I've ever taken with a smartphone. But when it comes to video, I think even till today, Apple is king and that's why I made the switch back at the 11 Pro and I instantly saw an improvement in my vlogs. Now, as I said at the top of this video, I'm giving you guys a vlogger's review of this device, what it's like to vlog with this phone, all of the pros and cons that come with that. Pro number one being, this is probably the best mobile recording device that you could ask for. The cons being only really like nitpicking things that someone like me who makes these videos for YouTube would catch on to, a lot of you guys probably wouldn't even notice. The number one thing that I love about the phone, besides its recording, right? We already established that the recording is phenomenal, but the next thing that I would say I love about this iPhone, the 14 Pro has some of the best battery life I've ever used on a smartphone especially for not being like a plus size device. If you're looking for an all-in-one content creation machine or specifically vlogs, I don't think the iPhone 14 Pro can be beat. Could record a rock solid 30 or 60 frames per second with or without HDR. I tend to go hdr list because editing for YouTube is a lot easier when there's no HDR on. It's just such a fluid and amazing experience. Now, do I wish that Apple gave you a bit more features in the default camera app? Yeah, I mean, recording the front and back cameras at the same time would be absolutely insane. Yes, I have the Filmic Pro, I think it's called, but how many times when I start the camera app and then realize, oh no, I wanna record front and back, it's too late. One of the amazing things about recording with the iPhone, especially considering that I live the life of using a real camera, and it's that the iPhone is so much easier to bring with you. It just fits in your pocket. Where having a big camera, you have to decide, do I wanna bring this with me today? Am I gonna film a vlog today? I left my camera home so many times thinking I didn't wanna vlog, but then something happened in the day that, oh wow, this would be awesome. I didn't have my camera. Now, yes, I could just go ahead and use my iPhone, but it's not something that you wanna do when you have the better quality of the camera, especially for examples like this, where I'm using the front-facing camera. A lot of the time, I'll switch the phone around just to get the better quality, but that's where a con comes in. Using the rear camera is better, but you can't see what you're doing. This is an issue that has been fixed by other companies like Motorola with their new Razer and Samsung's upcoming Galaxy Z Flip 5. I'm definitely pre-ordering that the day that I can and I will be reviewing it. I will be testing it out. So if you guys wanna check that out, make sure you subscribe, don't miss that video. Of course, taking photos with the iPhone is absolutely amazing. The pictures come out very iPhone-esque, or the pictures have a very iPhone look to them. Now you'll hear a lot of reviewers say that, and it's the truth. When you see an iPhone picture compared to other devices or cameras, you could kind of 
figure out which ones came from the iPhone. iPhones are much less saturated and have a certain kind of look to them while Samsung phones definitely raise the colors and the saturation and try to make things pop, try to make things look better than they look in real life. The iPhone does take absolutely amazing pictures. I have no problems taking pictures and videos of my 15 month old, of my four month old, of my 13 year old and my nine years old. Taking pictures of them moving and trying to get that quick shot is not a problem with the iPhone 14 Pro. And let's not forget all the options you have like portrait mode or cinematic video. Those things are definitely usable. For example, I'm gonna turn on cinematic video now. So this is what cinematic video looks like using the front facing camera, probably a little bit better when using the rear. But the reason I don't record like this is because the files are almost impossible to get onto the MacBook easily. Now this one is gonna transfer very quickly because it's gonna be like a 30 to 40 second clip. But I one time recorded a 10 minute video like this and it took me over an hour to get it onto my MacBook. So just keep that in mind when using cinematic video. If you're gonna use it on the device, that's one thing. But if you're trying to transfer it over to use it on Final Cut Pro, be careful how long you're recording clips like this. Okay, so we're back to normal now. Although that probably did look better, it's a lot easier to record this way and get the files off this way. I'll save that blurry background for when I'm using the back camera or whenever I get a regular camera again. Now, we have to mention the Dynamic Island. The Dynamic Island was something that I thought I was gonna use occasionally, but there's one thing that the Dynamic Island brought to iPhone that I never thought iPhone was gonna get. And that's the one click to get back to Google Maps. See, on an Android phone, whenever you navigate somewhere, if you didn't need to turn for like 30 miles, you would shut your screen off. And once you've seen the exit starting to get closer, or if you just want to check how much longer you had to go, you would just turn the screen back on and Google Maps would be there. There wouldn't be a lock screen. There wouldn't be notifications. It would literally just be Google Maps the second you put your screen back on. That was crucial for someone that had a car with no navigation. When I switched to iPhone, obviously, especially because I don't use Apple Maps, that feature was completely gone. There's no such thing as having that with the old notch. But with Dynamic Island, when you're navigating somewhere, you have the navigation icon on top. You simply tap it and it takes you right back into Google Maps. While it's not a perfect one-to-one -one with like I had on my Samsung phones or other Android devices, it's definitely a lot better than what I had before. Of course, let's not forget all the other features that Dynamic Island gives you, like controlling your music without leaving the app that you're in. Dynamic Island is pretty sweet. It's like a little task switcher for your iPhone. The iPhone 14 Pro is definitely the best vlogging smartphone out there. Don't be fooled by what other reviewers say. I've used Samsung, Apple, Sony, Motorola. No one really can keep up with the fluidity, smoothness, and just rock solid performance of the iPhone's camera. So what's my plans with the new iPhone 15 series coming out in September? And what about going back to Android? I would like to get the iPhone 15 Pro or Ultra. I would like to get that specifically to review it. Would I end up keeping it? I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure because yeah, the cameras on the new device might make it better, but my plan right now is to get back into a regular Sony camera or a Canon or a Lumix, something like that. So the iPhone cameras are like a secondary thing on my mind. Probably would be just for TikTok and Instagram reels and YouTube shorts, things of that nature. I think my best course of action is to purchase a iPhone 13 mini and 
sell this 14 Pro or give this 14 Pro to my wife because she hates her 12 mini because the battery life is absolutely horrible on that phone. And she always taken my phone anyways. So I might give her the 14 Pro. I might sell the 12 mini and get the 13 mini while it's still available from Apple or maybe used, maybe on the secondhand market for three or 400 bucks. Then just have that as a phone and use the real camera for recording my YouTube videos, vlogs, things of that nature. If you just wanna start off YouTube and you wanna make vlogs and you don't have an iPhone or a Samsung phone yet, or one of the higher end ones, I should say, probably watching this on a phone, 11, 12, 13, they're all fantastic. But the iPhone 14 Pro is an absolute winner. And I wanna say this is the first 10 out of 10 iPhone that I've ever used. 